Hey guys, it's Lauren with Divided by Sight, and today we're doing the Ask the Offer tag. If you guys need help with writing tips or help refilling your creative well, you've come to the right place as I'm a blind author. If you guys are new to the channel, don't forget to hit the subscribe and the bell icon for future videos and live stream. And if you are a returning guest, welcome back to the channel. So as usual, I'll read questions for Lauren, it's a little easier for her. So the first question is for JJ Rowling. What Hogwarts house do you associate with? Ooh, I have two answers. So obviously my primary house would be Gryffindor for being brave and protecting your friends and family and kind of being like stubborn and arrogant in a way but like going into things head first and not really thinking things through. And then my second answer would be Hufflepuff because they're kind and friendly to those they meet and always willing to help others. Next one is Stephen King. Do you believe in ghosts? Um, it's a hard question. I definitely think that there are things out there that we can't explain, but I don't know how to say I believe in ghosts. I believe that there's another realm out there that we don't know. Next one is John Green. If you had to go anywhere, real or fictional, where would you go? Oh, I have two answers, um, but they are technically both real. So my first answer would be Scotland. Woo! Yeah, well, or I think it's tied with like exploring more of Europe since we have been to London, but and I would like to visit other countries outside of the US. And then my other answer is real, but it's inspired by the Phantom of the Opera, which is the Paris Opera House. Not surprised. No, I want to go in and see what it looks like. Next question is Suzanne Collins. Who is the one person you can't live without? My partner in crime, Nikki. Aww. I don't think anybody would be surprised by that answer. Next one is Victor Hugo. Do you believe in love at first sight? Ooh, I don't know how to love at first sight. I believe that you can meet someone and instantly be attracted to them, but I think it's kind of hard to say that you would love someone when you're just meeting them for the first time. And then when I was looking at the question yesterday, I thought of Frozen. <laughs> you said yes to the guy you just met? Yes. See, it's away from. <laughs> I think that kind of proves the theory that it's kind of hard to really see how well you know someone after meeting them for one day. Next one is Stephanie Meyer. If you would be any supernatural being, what would you be? No, I thought you say Dryden. Oh, oh, that's a good answer. Yeah, you know, he likes hoarding shiny things. You sleep all day. Yep. You like fire. <gasps> Can I be a dragonborn? You could. Dragonborn is half dragon, half human. Yay! Because my answer would be a fire elemental. Oh, God. That's <laughs> <laughs> F. Scott Fitzgerald. He wrote The Great Gatsby. Right. And question was, if you had unlimited funds for one day, what would you spend on? Ooh, that's a hard question. It's always like when people ask if you won the lottery, what would you do with it? So probably help me and my family get rid of debt. Cause a lot of people have student loans or pay off housing. Get Nicole and I a little house by the water. Ooh. My little oceanfront property. Mm hmm. Um, no, worries, it's unlimited. I know. It makes the question harder. Donate a bunch to charities, especially those that are doing research for um, eye diseases that cause the retina to deteriorate, like the Foundation for Fighting Blindness. Um. 
build a accessible theme park for adults. Hell yeah. Since a lot are made for children. Uh, hmm. I guess the other thing would help Nicole open her own cafe. Aww. And I could just be like a food critic. <laughs> Yeah, that's a tough question. I, I was thinking to use that to do how with the research for Fine Blindness. Uh huh. Was to also to use the money to fix education systems. That way, people with disabilities can actually go above high school levels. Ooh. That sounds like a daunting task. But if you have unlimited money, you can her money at it until you do it. I mean, you just build your own college and stuff. Yay! Next one is the famous playwriter William Shakespeare. Do you prefer comedy, comedies or tragedies? Well, Nick knows the answer. I prefer comedies because there are enough tragic, sad things going on in the world, and I always try to see the humor in everything because that's how you get through life. The next one is more Lauren's area for cheese because I know you read these books, but it's Veronica Rock. And what fraction would you be in? Hmm, I had to look this up too because I couldn't remember what all the factions were. Um, I guess if I had to pick one, because I like the idea of those that are factionless, like they don't belong to one group. But if I had to pick one for the question, I would say Amity because they're all for being kind and good to others. And also they farm and harvest a lot of the food that are distributed to the other factions. So I might butcher this one, I apologize. The offer is David Levian. Or is that sound it? Then it's less enough. <laughs> if you could be anyone else for one day, who would it be? So, I had to rethink this answer, but I think it would be cool to be a writer for Disney. That's a good answer. <laughs> and let's face it, there's nothing good time for Disney right now. Yeah, and then you can have your story brought to life, and you can help reshape how they see the whole Disney trope. Because even after Frozen, like, they're still... I feel like they're still resisting the old idea that there is like some part of the princess that has to be saved. <laughs> no, for his old footstep has also had to be saved by her sister. So it's still there. Yeah, but why couldn't she just be the hero of her own story? Why can't Anna be the hero instead of Elsa? Or why can the story push on Anna instead? Oh. Next one is H.G. Wells. If you traveled to any point in time, where and wh when would you go? Um, hmm. I'm not the history nerd, thank you. But I do like the Renaissance period. That's when a lot of new form of architecture and art was being created. And even though it had a darker theme, it had this idea of like pushing the envelope of what was considered to be art. Right, would you want to go before the play to it? Well, yeah. It made me know the episode for Family Guy where Brian is at the time, you're like, Oh, Brian, are you a Harry Potter series? <laughs> so, if you guys liked the video, I thought this was a fun tag to do because it incorporated well-known offers and offers that I admire and with some fun questions to ask the offer. And if anybody wants to do the video, feel free to do it. I choose you! As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon for future videos and live streams. The fantasy anthology is still open. It will be open until April of next year. Ooh. So if you guys have any poems, short stories, 
art or songs that feature magic or mythical creatures, feel free to reach out to me through the channel or my email if you'd like to submit to the anthology. And as always, find a way to be creative today and I'll see you in the next one.